Amen. Hallelujah. We're just so excited. I was listening to your, um, your Gideon groups and things like that. Thank you. I said, that's like our Metron groups. And y'all got one in Tallahassee. Hallelujah. And um, Minister Charles gave us an idea. He's our, he's our social media minister. Hallelujah. But we now, we now have Facebook Live Metron. We reach out to people like all over, and they be tuning in. It's so good. So just, that's just to help you expand the reach. You know what? The remnant, we're going after people in uncommon ways. And they tune in, and they get to hear that, that the Lord did put in his church some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equi equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And I like when they call me and they say, there's no modern-day apostles. I say, only, only apostles are the ones who walk with Jesus. I said, well, Paul didn't walk with Jesus, and you read his word every week. Hallelujah. So you got to know how to answer them intelligently. And then they back up. Yeah, that's just a devil trying to talk. Amen? Let's get to the word. I hope I'm okay. I know I'm okay. So I, I want to do this, and then we're going to have altar call. Amen? I'm just so honored to be here. Um, and, and just, I'm always grateful. It's just an honor to speak to people of God. Um, John 15, John chapter 15. I want to talk about, again, the fight for God's reality. But I'm going to back it up to when I first heard this word from the Lord. The fight for God's reality. What we just did was we just fought for God's reality when we just laid hands on people apostle. His reality says you're healed. His reality said you're restored. His reality says we're going forward. His reality says we shall live and not die. His reality says your children are all coming home and they're going to all act right. And they're going to act right. And they're going to act right. And they're going right. to act right. So we now have seven kids together, seven. But they ain't in the house. Glory to Jesus. We just got the, we got the youngest one, yes, you know. And then we got grandchildren, and we're getting ready to have duplets. I call them duplets. They're twins, grandchildren. But we just love the grandchildren. Give them sugar, donuts, red fruit punch, and send them home. Hallelujah. <laughs> they be speeding all over the house. Be like, bye. We love you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John 15. So I've been preaching this series for a while, and I asked the Lord, he said, to bring it here, the fight for God's reality. And you guys have been in that, so I want to put some things in front of you. John chapter 15, in, I'm starting at, at verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples." We glorify God when we bear much fruit. Amen? Let me read it to you from the Amplified. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. When you bear fruit. Not when you just come to church. Okay, this prophetess Lisa, and I'm just coming here to just root up, turn over, because you know what? I, the Lord wants fruit, and I do too. That's what we do for each other. So I read that, and the Lord had me read it again and read it again. He said, Lisa, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you ask me what you will, and it shall be done. And I said it, it be, and, and then God began to get, me, to get me to see how some of the church, we have taken that word and made it our words and not his words. Amen. He says, no, no, no. If my words abide in you, meaning if what I told you abides in you, and you can ask me what I told you you could have, then you could have that. So the question is, what did he tell you you could have? Peace, joy, authority, prosperity, healing. He told you that. Did he not? Are you speaking that? And what that looks like is totally up to God because he's sovereign. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to just go there. So he said, the fight for God's reality. Because the world will tell you you can't have stuff like that. But the, the word of God says, if I abide in him. Not if I abide in the government. But if I abide in his word. If I abide in what he said. 
So there's a mindset change that's taking place. We are in a new season. We've heard it, Apostle when you know, and, and, and it's interesting, I've learned this, Apostle David, uh, a few weeks before that, the Lord given me new season, and I preached it in a word. So it's like I opened it, I just brought it out there, and then three weeks later, Apostle Jonas got up, and you could just sense that apostolic thing on it, the, and he broke it open, and I said, look, it's here, y'all, it's here. It's here, the new season is here. Remember, Catania? He broke it open, and everybody was shouting, and I was shouting too, and I said, oh, the fight getting ready to get real right now. <laughs> Y'all know, listen, when the Lord says, I've noticed that the prophet may say something, but when the apostle opens it, now it's here, and let the fight begin. Oh, yeah, it's getting ready to get so real. And right afterward, it just got crazy, Irma and all this kind of stuff, like, oh, come on here. But I want to tell you, God, see, it's still in, in Isaiah 43 says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Shall you not know it? In the, in the, in the, in the Amplified, it says, he said, won't you recognize it? Will you not see it? That's what we're talking about. So we're in this new season. We got to think differently. We got to act differently. We, we have to do this. Now, one of the things we have to do, if you're writing anything down, you got to guard your heart. I know you've heard a lot of these things before, but I need you to hear it like you've never heard it. Guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4 talks about it because out of it springs the issue of life. Uh, of life. See, you, you, you got to guard your heart because when you say stuff, it's going to happen. So you got to make sure you're saying the right stuff. Because, you know, the words we speak, they do have life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, that the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. And so if you don't want some of the stuff you got, stop saying the stuff you've been saying. Mm, we've learned that words frame our world. Gee, the Lord framed the world with the word. He framed it with the word. He framed it. So right here, God's reality is that you can frame stuff with what you say. So what are you saying? Are you saying what he said you can have? Or are you saying and getting what you've said you could have? Mm-hmm. And not all of it's good that we got. Yeah. So, so when I said the fight for God's reality, there are two. So the Holy Spirit started showing me this. He said there are two realities competing for our attention, write down attention if you're writing it down, right? They're vying for our attention. These two realities or several realities, I'm going to say, but mainly two, fighting for our agreement, fighting for our acknowledgement and fighting for our acceptance. Did you hear that? They're fighting for, so we got two realities, God's reality and the devil's reality, fighting for your attention, fighting for your agreement, fighting for your acknowledgement. And fighting for your acceptance. I'm going to break those down for you real quick. Is that okay? Yeah. Because see, you know what? What I'm giving you, God is showing me more and more. I'm, I'm a prophet that brings strategies. A strategy is to be able to see what the enemy's doing. It's almost like we could read his email. He'd be sending all them emails. You know, he tries to like do that thing and not let us see to all his little demon friends. But we see you. Yeah. Open up the email, read. Get them to accept this and they'll leave God. Let me show you what he's doing. Let me show you. And, and we've all fell into it. I had to just, I had to, I had to really step back and just repent because I fell into one of them, but I got out. He's vying, there's two realities vying for our attention. So listen, to, the reality is God's reality, which is truth. Amen. The enemy's reality, which is a lie. Would you agree? So they're competing for my attention. A reality is what? What you deem to be real. Can we say that? Reality television shows that some of us watch, they show us something that looks real, but it's not real. Would you agree? So, but God is saying, but what I'm showing to you is real because Holy Ghost is showing you my truth. Attention. There are two vying for your focus and your pursuit of it. We learn from Apostle Jonas, focus is a master key. Focus is a master key. Focus is the ability to manage distractions. I teach that in my leadership course. Focus is the ability to manage it. And, and the enemy is fighting for your focus, and the Lord wants your focus. Yes. Keeping your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, while the enemy wants to show you something else. Two realities. And, and the enemy can show you something that looks really good, but is it God? 
attention. So, and what I've noticed, and the more attention you give to one focus, the focus on the other one gets real dumb and dim. Can you, can you see it? The more you focus on the challenge, the more you focus on the lack, the more you focus on your hurt, you can't see healing, increase, prosperity. The Lord said the door was open to us. What was behind the door? Increase, opportunity, expand it, expansion, promotion, and influence. So over here, you see less and less, but over here, the Lord already said what was behind the door. If you keep looking over here, this gets dimmer. You keep looking at the enemy, listen, it gets... That's a strategy from him. Are you paying attention? When you're, when you're paying attention, and I want to say, and what you're paying attention to, to gives an indication to which, which reality you're really engaged with. Let me say it again. Wherever you're focusing tells us which reality you're engaged with. And all I got to do is just listen to you talk. Well, you know, we ain't got much. Wrong reality. Well, you know, we down and out and everybody against us. Wrong reality. As opposed to, our God shall supply all that we need, no matter what that says. I'm, I'm going to give you some more in a minute. Is it making sense? I don't be wanting to ramble like an idiot. The devil is a liar. God's reality is calling you. The enemy wants to destroy. Satan, write this down. Satan is a master of diversion. And he's great at using diversionary tactics. He pulls you away from the truth by creating lies. And you know that. And so how does he do it? He does this. He does this by trying to redirect you. He redirects. He redirects. So he'll ask questions that question the intent and the character of God. He'll ask you that. And I like saying it because sometimes we don't get it. So Eve is out shopping one day. The Lord's already told them, from every tree in the garden you can eat, but this one, don't eat of it. Because, you know, just don't, t don't, don't mess with this one. So she's out shopping one day in the produce section. I'm just trying to give you. And, and so now the enemy comes up and talks to her. Why is she talking to a man that ain't her husband? I'm just messing with y'all. Come on. <laughs> ladies. And single ladies, I know he could be fine, but you better discern that brother. He could be smelling good. Discern him. And so she's shopping. You know, did God say this and this? Well, no, we're not supposed to. But did God really say that? The church, we, we have, we have uh, promises from God. We have instructions for God. Give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down, shaking together. Did God really say it had to be 10%? Why, can, why can't you just give like an offering? Does God, God don't need your money. You hear the other reality talking to you? Uh, there are a bunch of thieves in the church. You better be careful. Other voice. Getting your attention. And before you know it, you're fighting the word of God. <laughs> you know, we say in our church, tithing is for believers. And in our house, tithing is for sons and daughters. And if you don't want to tithe, we don't fight you about that. Because believers just do it. And I'm going to let that hang in the air. Because I'm not questioning your belief system. I'm not questioning your salvation. I hear you, devil. I hear you. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about following a commandment of God. And if that's what you're struggling with, it's okay. Let the Lord teach you. The Holy Ghost will show you. He'll show you what you need. We don't, we, what we don't do is we don't condemn people for what they don't do. We let the Holy Ghost draw you into what you need to see. Amen? Amen. So he asked questions. He, and so let me tell you, God's reality about Satan is found in John 8, 44. And it says what? That Satan is the father of lies. That's God's reality. So you need to remember that. God's reality about himself is found in Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie to you, nor the son of man that he should have to change his mind. God has a character. He backs up his own word when nobody else would back it up. He said, well, I couldn't find anybody else to back it up. I back up my own word. How many people let you know back up their own word? So acceptance. Second one, agreement. So now, two realities want you to agree with them. Agree with what they've said. Now, when you come into an agreement with the reality, you start talking it more. You start talking it. You start talking. You know, you watch those commercials, and they talk about, well, my, my um, fibromyalgia. I'm like, it ain't mine. 
How you going to claim a sickness? But I hear church people saying, you know, my arthritis, what? It ain't mine. <laughs> Change the way you speak. Reality. Reality. Rea I know this sounds basic, but you know what? God's taking us back to basics. The conference in November, we're going back to Acts 1 and 8. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You need strategy to understand what the Holy Ghost is trying to say to you. Because, see, you got to guard what you say. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth. But you know what? Sometimes I've noticed people will agree with the wrong reality because they want attention. And, and they want sympathy. And they want all this stuff. But let me tell you something right now. The remnant, we don't have time to be sympathizing with you for something that God's delivered you from. We're not going to keep, we're not going to keep doing that when God has given you his word, when God's given you authority, when God's given you power, when God's given you the answer. Fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. The words that come out of your mouth tell us what reality you're agreeing with. So you need to watch the words coming out of your mouth. Do you hear the words coming out of my mouth? Hallelujah. Some of y'all saw that movie. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. So now, the time, between, the time between hearing the word and then actually taking hold of it, receiving the promise, that's critical. I need to go there. So we receive the word that the door is open, and here's what's behind it, and we're in a new season. But now the time that we actually see all of it happening is critical. Because sometimes it's a delay. And, I, and we, we call it the the test, I heard Prophetess Baker say, as I use it, it's called the test called delay. And that's where we don't pass the test. God said it, and we shouting in the church, hallelujah, that seed fell. Some of it fell on stony ground. Some of it fell on thorny ground. Some of it just got choked out of us because we got home and all the bills just coming after us, talking to us. So we just ain't coming back to the church no more because people lied. It's a critical place between hearing, receiving. But I want to tell you something. And it seems to me that when God gives a word, just like he gave a word to this house, it seems like when God gives a word to the house, it sets in motion the delay test. It's like the Holy Ghost says, okay, now we're going to administer the test called delay. I'm like, where Holy Ghost? Why? We just can't get what he said. Didn't you say that? He said, well, but we just got to see if you're really ready for it. And if you notice that when a test is given, because I'm an instructor at the college, at the academy, when a test is given, the teacher don't say nothing no more. Yeah, write that down, Apostle David. Say, Prophet Lisa said it. Yeah. <laughs> and then after you say it about two times, you can have it. Because see, he be saying some deep stuff. Apostle David says, you only get change when you change. I'm like, or something like, it was so deep. I'm like, that's good. And then the Apostle Jonah started doing that. He said, oh, I sound like Apostle David. So we just follow after each other. Did you hear that? It's like it begin, the teacher, when the test starts, the teacher is silent. Why? Because the teacher wants to see what you've learned. Are you listening? See, this is equipping. Now the teacher gets out. I want to see what you learned. Do you know? So when the enemy says this, what do you say? What do you do? What is your answer? Multiple choice question. What are we going to say? Because there's all kind of realities put in front of you. What do you select? There's a fight. The fight for God's reality starts when God sends a word from heaven. The commanding heights has said the door is open. The commanding heights has said I'm getting ready to bless my people. The commanding heights has said that you are healed. The commanding heights has said you got, you're prosperous. You have everything. Your bank accounts will never be empty again because you got a kingdom work. And then I go look at the bank account. It's a negative $38. Come on here. And it keep and, and stuff be hitting the bank, and I don't know where it came from. So now we had hundred dollars negative, two hundred dollars negative. Well, what did God say? Oh, and then the enemy says, maybe you miss God. I told you about giving to them people at them church. I told you about going. Listen to me. Can I be real? I told you about going to that that church with that white man. I can say that. I told Apostle Jonas, <laughs> I told Apostle Jonas when I first came to the church because God sent me there. 
And he sent me there because I was fighting being a prophet. I didn't want to be. I don't want to do it. I'm not saying it. We're not doing that, God. Who am I telling God that, right? But I went to the first service, and it was the end of a conference. And, and I'm not diverting. I'm talking God's reality still. But I went in, and I sat near the door. I said, because this white man say one crazy thing. I'm so out of here. <laughs> I told him I said that he laughed. Twelve years later, I'm still there. We just crazy together, him and Pastor Rhonda. I love me some of them, hallelujah. But, but, I remember, but everything he said, God had already said to me in my bedroom. And it scared me because I wasn't hearing no other preachers say that. I wasn't, hear bishop, I wasn't hearing the bishop say it. I wasn't hearing pastors say it. I certainly wasn't hearing the false prophets say nothing. Oh, don't get me going on the false prophets again. Okay? Because that gets me started. How you respond to the test is critical. Your answers are important. What you choose to agree with is critical. The words you speak, your behavior, when it gets tough, what do you do? When it gets hard, when the Lord releases a word, you don't see it immediately. Do you stay away from church? Do you start talking against church? Do you start talking negative? Are you, do you start saying things opposite than what we should say? Listen, there's no condemnation. Because you know what? Remember, we're three-part beings. And sometimes our flesh and our soul just start going there. Your spirit man knows well what's going on. But sometimes your soul just gets out of whack. Ladies, you know how we feel. Like, you know, sometimes. You know what? I'm trying to be um, talking code. But the husband's like, we know. <laughs> You know, and sometimes it's like you say, the guy says something and we just go there. Or something doesn't go the right way and we just go off. But we know some of that has to do with things in our subconscious. Yeah, it is. Things that we haven't dealt with. And then the rest of it's hormonal. Like right now, I'm having my own private summer. It's just hot. Y'all probably cold. <laughs> I, be having, I be having a house at 68. The man be walking around in a blanket. Poor man. <laughs> I said, welcome to the world of the prophet, hallelujah. <laughs> welcome to the ministry, praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo, okay. But you know how it is when you just, you just start feeling stuff. And, and guys, when you just start thinking and, and thinking and, and thinking some more and, and overthinking it and just thinking and be like, baby, can we go? Well, I'm thinking, well, you've been thinking for like nine weeks. Can we just go? Are you listening? But see, that's what the enemy does. He tries to use our soul against us. That's why your born-again spirit must agree with God's reality. Your born-again spirit will tell you, be still and know that he is God. Your born-again spirit says, listen, remember what God told you. Your born-again spirit says, mm -mm, don't pay attention to the pain. By his stripes, you're healed. Oh, Hallelujah. I remember I was, I was up against a big thing, and it was a big tax issue, and, and we weren't in the wrong, I wasn't in the wrong, but the enemy showed himself. And when I tell you fear tried to talk to me, it was, a, it was big. And that was one of the times I had to hear God and fight for his reality like I never fought before. Amen. And God showed himself strong on my behalf. See, the, the enemy's reality will say one thing, but God says vindication. And when God says that, that you, what you do, how do you fight back? You get in the word, you find vindication, and you study it, and you study it, and you study it, and you get it in your spirit so that when the enemy shows up, hallelujah, so now one day we think we're good, I think I'm good, I'm thinking, I'm good, and then all my accounts get levied. Every bank account I got levied. Are you listening to me? And I was standing in a room in front of a room full of police officers getting ready to do a training. I had to turn my back and say, Holy Ghost, you're going to help me today. And I turned around and said, Good morning. Welcome to class. I was shaking on the inside. God, what am I going to do? He said, Teach the class. I got this. See, fight for God's reality. Not run out of the classroom. Not cancel the class. Are you? You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> But God worked that thing out. He's working out some things for you right now. Can I tell you something? Listen, if you're attached to this church, please hear me. If you're attached to this church, stay plugged in. 
Don't let the enemy run you out of here. Because what you need is in this man and in this woman. Amen. Your destiny, everything you need is in him. And God will use him to equip you to get you to where God has you to go. Is that making sense? We get more people that will come, start, and then they run. When I see people start running, Ms. Minister Della, all the ministers here, they will tell you what I'm talking about. When people run, it's, you're right at the breakthrough. Is that not right, Ms. Della? You're at the breakthrough, God trying to show you. And, but what the enemy comes and does and say, they don't love you at this church. They don't care nothing about you. People come and go all the time. Why people don't stay at this church? Why is this church not a mega church? Because God doesn't need a mega church. God needs a remnant church of believers who understand miracles, signs, and wonders. And see, let me tell you, mega to God looks like this. Mega to God looks like a 50,000 email list. That touches people around the world. See, that's what we have. 50,000 people. 100,000 emails a week go out from Spirit of Life Ministries. All around, the, that's mega church. That's God's way. That's equipping. That's what's happening here. Get ready, Apostle David. Get ready, y'all. And let me tell you, the anointing flows down. So when he increases, when they increase, you increase. I got people in here, witnesses. Apostle Jonas and Pastor Rhonda increase. I've seen increase in my business. We've seen increase in our business. We've seen expansion. Open door. He's ministering to the generals in, Nick, in, in Honduras. God's opened the door for me to minister to law enforcement all over the state of Florida, and I just stepped into Georgia. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> you know, and, and y'all don't think it's a big deal, but for a female to stand in front of law enforcement and say anything, that, and I'm a civilian, but, but God has given me insight into their world at such a time as this. A black woman talking to law enforcement. And a black woman, listen to me, who respects law enforcement. I want you to hear me. I'm not attacking them. But a black woman who understands they got to do some things differently. Are you listening to me? A black woman who understands that, they, that, that God's giving a way into them. And I don't just talk to the troops. I talk to the chiefs and the sheriffs. and the God is opening up a door for you to do the same thing. He's bringing kingdom authority to meet kingdom authority. And you can't be scared. I'm scared. Because I know goodness and mercy follow me. That's God's reality. Okay, I'm going to be done in a minute. Y'all okay? So when you take a test, tests have objectives. I do testing and assessments. Tests have an objective. What are, they're testing for knowledge. Would you agree? They're testing for understanding. They're testing for your skill level. How skilled are you in discernment? How skilled are you at reading the word? How skilled are you at responding and let me tell you what discernment is. Discernment, see, the enemy is very, very good. So spiritual discernment is this. S discernment is not just the difference between right and wrong. It's the difference between right and almost right. Mm -hmm. Write it down. I'm giving you strategy. See, where we are right now, where this church is going, there's a difference between right and almost right. It looked like, it looks like God. It feels like God. It smells like God. It's not God. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Christian yoga is an almost right, but it's so foul. I know I touched somebody's golden idol. I, if I touched your calf, good. Because you know what? The enemy is bringing too many things, and he's trying to make, he's trying to do a mix. It's called syncretism. And syncretism is simply when you try to take what's profane, and you take what's holy, and mix it and give it to God. Listen, there is Christian rap. I have no problem with Christian rap. Hallelujah. Because there are, some, there are some gospel artists, young guys and ladies, they're getting our children in with some Christian rap. And it's powerful. It's from the word. There is no such thing. You can't match holy hip-hop. I know I just messed with some. You can't match holy and hip-hop. Hip-hop was founded 
back in back out of some years ago. His name is, I'm gonna just teach him in it just for a second. African Bombada is his name. And, but he founded it out of the dark places of Africa. And it was from underworld stuff. And they came and, and hip hop is a culture. Hip hop is a religion. Go look it up. Go look it up in the Library of Congress. Hip hop is a religion. They have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. So every rapper that comes with the worldly ones, listen, we have a culture. Does the kingdom have a culture? Dress, language, economics. Hip hop has a dress, language, economics. Are you listening to me? And it has an objective. So what does the enemy do? Oh, we're gonna have a holy hip hop conference. The devil is a liar. But if you want to have a conference for kids, the youth, and you bring some Christian rappers up here, yeah, shake the house. Glory to God. And I know you're like, what's the difference? The, the underlying, the undertone, what's really being kept. Hip-hop demeans women. How can it be holy? Hip-hop encourages disrespect to authority. How can you make it holy? Come on, y'all praying for me? Pray. Because the enemy telling me to shut up. Are you listening to me? Hip-hop encourages separation in families. How can that be holy? It's everything opposite God. There's right and almost right. Mm -hmm. Yes, hallelujah. We're going to come back and do that another time. you you got to pay attention. So, that, so, so, so now we get to say, you know what, well, we need to have a concert. That's great. And you know, we could bring some rappers in. All right. And they could do some holy hip hop. Hold up. <laughs> but they're saved. They believe God. They speak in tongues. Okay. Bring them here. Let me talk to them. And when I start talking, I just listen. And slowly I start hearing a new age flow. Yeah. When they want to talk about gods and goddesses. And that we're gods and goddesses. Come on, the Bible says they never told us we were gods and goddesses. We're made in his image. You see the subtlety and in his likeness. We can create from his words, but it's his word that we use, not our own. Okay, I'm going to go on because that would be like a whole nother teaching. I'm trying to, God's reality. That's something we got to, youth ministers, y'all got to teach that to the youth. I'm going to give y'all some information. I want you to study it and teach it with, the, with your approval, sir. Study it, teach it to them. They got to know the difference. They got yoga in classrooms, telling this excess, it's exercise. It ain't exercise. Well, it helps them breathe, breathe. That's all you do. We ain't playing with you. They tried that with my granddaughter. They tried it with Michaela. Oh, wait a minute. So, and you know, your grandkids, when your grandkids are apostolic, you know, you got to be careful. So they said they were doing the yoga class. Kayla said, said uh, my mama said that yoga is from the devil. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> Woo! and I'm not doing it. And she said, all oh, y'all don't need to do it either. I'm like, oh, th Jesus. Kayla, just talk for yourself for a moment, baby. And yeah, I got caught. And then they, so then they sent her to the office so she could wait. I went down there and said, you will not send her to an office. Because she's not going to be separated like that. If you want to send her to another classroom to do some work, that's fine. But you're not going to, well, we just wanted you to know that yoga would just, I said, no, yoga is not what she's going to do. That's what we've selected to do, and we pay you. Okay, I'm moving on. No, we got to teach our kids God's reality. Because you know what? Our kids face, the kids face some, everybody in here that's, Below 30, stand up. I see some of y'all oh, y'all trying to stand up. Here. <laughs> look at that. Look, look at here. We, we, look, you see this right here? This right here is who we're pouring into. And a lot of them are here. To, but this is who we're pouring. And this is this. And the, and the enemy, the enemy is taking the fight. You see these young men right here? The enemy, you see the, all the young men in here? The enemy is fighting them. The enemy is fighting you guys. We, we, can, can I ask you, is he fighting you? All kinds of ways. The ladies, the enemy is fighting you. Would you agree? And see, the enemy is fighting them like he didn't fight us. He's fighting them a whole different kind of way. 
So we got to equip them with God's reality. And you know what? It's going to make them a bullseye. It's going to make them a target. But we got to build into them the faith of God. And, we're, and listen, y'all, listen. We're not telling you you're not going to mess up. You're probably going to mess up. But it's okay because you serve a God, amen, that says that if you come to him and you confess your sin, that he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you believe that? Amen. I'm going to pray for the young people before I go. That's what the Lord just said. Okay, y'all can sit down. They're like, why is she making us stand up? I love y'all. <laughs> the boys are like, what? <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. Because, see, I'm going home back to um, South Florida. Yes. <laughs> Where we fight crazy devils and stuff. Uh -huh. So, listen, I, I want to get to this. I want to just get to one thing I want to say, and then I'm going to pray. I need to say this. Thank you, Jesus. You know, a lot of times people wonder why when God says something, they aren't, they quote unquote think they're not getting it. But one thing we learned is that in order to get the promise of God, you must follow the principle of God. You, you don't get a promise, you don't get a promise answered unless you follow the principle. Did that make sense? God is a God of order. He's a God of law. And, and, and he's a God of rule. Rules aren't there to stop you from anything. Rules and laws actually protect you. They, they give you guidelines on what to do and what, and what not to do. And there's a whole place in there to play. In, in law enforcement, there's the SOP. And they're, they're, it's there to protect the officers. It's there to protect the department. Amen. And if you just break SOP, if you break policy, and then you're just going to be in trouble. When you break the SOP. When, the, the, when you break kingdom operating principles, when you, when you choose not to follow kingdom operating principles, then you put yourself in the enemy's reality. Hallelujah. So a principle is an instruction and an action that, must, that you must take that will lead to a predetermined result. I'm going to read it again. A principle is an instruction. It's an action that you must take that will lead to a predetermined result. That's the key, a predetermined result, meaning the result's already done if you follow the principle. Hmm. Predetermined result from before the foundation of the world has been waiting. Pastor Jonah says something, and, um, and he talked about how God's word has power in the earth. And, and when you speak a word, sometimes you don't see it immediately, but he said the word has gone forth and it's waiting for you in your future. Amen. Did you hear that? Hallelujah. He showed it like when he spoke to the fig tree. It didn't have any figs on it, so he spoke to it for it to wither up and die. Now, at that moment... Nothing happened. The apostles were standing around him, and I'm, I'm, I'm following Apostle John, and they probably looked at Jesus and said, see, y'all, I told y'all he was crazy. <laughs> he talk, he doing this. You speak in the situations, and people around you say, like, she keep going to that church. He keep going over there with that apostle man. But the next day they come back, and the tree is withered from the root. It went into the future. What did God say to you? New beginning, new season, open door, debt free, heal, restoration. You may not see it right now. The fight might be on. It's waiting for you in the future. It's the test called delay. It's a fight for God's reality. We're trying to, you know, it's like God's trying to see, let's just see if they got it. Let's just see if they got it. Let's see if they're going to do what I told them to do. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. What am I doing when I'm waiting to go? When I'm waiting to get there, Father, show me what I need to do. Okay, test call delay. Lord God, the words put a guard on my lips that I won't sin against you. You hear me? I'm still walking. It's over there. Lord, direct my steps. I'm just talking right now. Is it? I'm trying to show you how you do, how you do. See, sometimes we tell you what to do, but we don't tell you how to do. When the fight gets tough, we taught Demetron. When, when the fight is tough and we got to, the first thing I do in my house, worship music. 
We, I'm resetting the atmosphere here. The enemy can't just come in our house and do what he wants to do. You put praise music on, you put worship music on, and you just let it go. Just let it go. And sometimes you just get one song. It's one song I got called Victory Belongs to Jesus. I prayed that song for eight hours. Left the room, came back, left the house, came back. It was still playing. When I came back, I felt a shift. I'm like, yeah, you're going to get up out of here, devil. That's how you take authority. That's how you do it. So we're showing you those kind of, so one more thing. The source of your words is important. So now, listen. Lord says something. He's expecting us to do something. And where you heard it from is very important. If God says it, that's what we do. If he didn't say it, we don't do that. It's just like we teach children. If mom and daddy said it, that's what you do. If somebody that you don't know tells you something that don't sound right, you don't do that. Is that, is that kind of clear? Even if they're really nice. See, they get kids now with puppies and, beer and candy. The enemy gets us with puppies and candies and gifts. What do they look like? Promises of a promotion that's not from God. Promises of things that didn't come from God. So let me tell you something. You ask God for a job, he gives it to you. When he gives it to you, it won't take you away from church on Sunday. But the enemy heard you too. And he'll give you one too. And it'd be a lot of money. But we ain't seen you in eight months. Because now we're working so hard. Could it be possible that Pharaoh just bought you? Pharaoh. Where well, we're going to put more work on you. And we're going to make you work harder. And we ain't giving you no straw to work with. We're going to make you work three times harder. And you better not go to that, that remnant conference. But I got time on the book. Go and see what happens. Was it God? The source of where you hear your words from is important. Words are containers. Words contain a spirit. Words carry assignments. When the Lord said to me, I want you to honor, you and your husband, to honor Apostle David and Miss Geraldine, I never thought twice about it. You know why? Because we've been equipped to do that. We, we honor up, we honor out, we honor our children. Uh-oh. Did you? We honor brothers and sisters. We, we, see, we, we, it's not just an up thing. See, the old order church is always up, 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 and the people. But now it's out, and it's not just money. Miss Della, Miss Della just like honored me when I was fighting this cold. She gave me some herbal stuff that I know costs money. She just sold it into me. You hear me? I'm getting better. We've, we honor each other that way. Amen. I've honored Miss Trish. We're honoring. That's what we do. Because you know what? That's what the body does for each other. And when you all begin to do that, it's getting ready to explode in your life. Please hear me when I tell you. It is a principle. So where you hear that from is important. Words carry assignments and they carry answers. Listen to me. I, we just sold and we sold into Apostle Jones. We, sold, we, just, we, we just sold everywhere. Hallelujah. And, and you know what? And I love what Apostle David said. When the fight comes, that means the devil just got scared. I'm like, I didn't even see it like that. Open your eyes and see. He's mad, but he's also scared. You know why? Because you just saw something. You saw something you weren't supposed to see. You heard something you weren't supposed to hear. Don't go to sleep yet. Don't go to sleep yet. Because that's how he that's how he tries to get you to see and hear. Because see, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. But if you go to sleep and don't hear the words, you can't say what I said because you don't know what I said. But you know what you want, but is that what I want, says God? Words reveal promise, words reveal purpose, words can direct strategies. Strategies. Shall we go up? No, don't go up this time, go around. Shall we go here? Shall we go there? The Bible says you shall hear a word behind you 
saying, this is the way, walk in it. The number of times we heard who to call, who not to call, who to ask, who not to ask. Wait. You don't, write this word down, wait. Wait is a strategy. It's a word that carries strategy. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not. Wait is a strategy. Wait makes the enemy show his hand. Wait is a military strategy. Words set destinies and destinations. Words bring counsel. Words bring direction. And there's a lot of fake news going on. And a lot of people posting fake news on Facebook. A lot of people carrying fake news. That's not God's reality. This country is not going down. We are still one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And what our role is, remnant, God's reality, is to continue to pray for this nation until the church is raptured. And I think it was Apostle David that, you know, somebody, everybody trying to prophesy that the Lord's coming back. He was supposed to be back, I think, September 20-something. What's today's date? And we still here. I mean, because he ain't going, he ain't, ain't nobody getting raptured and I ain't gone. And Apostle David's still here. Miss Geraldine's. <laughs> Ms. Ge Apostle Jonah's still there. Uh-uh-uh. They still there. We still good. I'm, I'm just, but we can't, be, but, but, so my point is this. But while we're here, we're to pray. God's reality. What is God saying to you? That's where you fight from. This is the confidence that we have. That when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then we have the petitions that we have asked of him. This is the confidence that we have. That if I abide in him and his words abide in me. Did you hear? I can ask what I will. And it shall be done. The question is, are you abiding? Write that down. I want you to ask yourself this every, am I abiding? Number one, ask the Lord how he wants you to abide. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord what is your assignment now. Ask him. God's reality. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm going to pray.